It's 1933, and in Germantown, Philadelphia, Charles Darrow is about to see something that will change his life forever. Charles Darrow was invited to a dinner party in his neighborhood and played this new game. It was so much more challenging than most board games of the time, and you could almost see the light bulb go on over his head. It's completely different from any game he's ever played. For one thing, it doesn't have a start or finish, just a continual clockwise path. As simple as that sounds, it was a radical idea for its day. Players buy and sell properties, go to jail and take a chance, winning and losing thousands of dollars could play with fantasy money in a way that so many people couldn't then or now do in real life. Darrow immediately sets about making his own version. Today, it occupies pride of place at the Museum of Play in Rochester, New York. This is the first Monopoly board. The one that was hand painted by Charles Darrow. It's made out of oil cloth. Copying from the board he saw, Darrow uses Atlantic City street names. But he also adds the iconic Go Corner and groups each set of properties with a color. What Darrow did was to give it the look and feel that we know to this day. And he provided the common man's touch. The images on it are the ones we know right down to the present. It has shaped the rest of game history. The problem is it isn't exactly true. What really happened is a woman invented it in 1904. 30 years before the Great Depression and Darrow, America is enjoying a financial boom overseen by the wealthy robber barons. We had Carnegie, Rockefeller, all these uh, big names that were wealthier in a way that we had never really seen in this country before at the time. Enter Quaker, activist, and former actress, Lizzie McGee, inventor of the landlord's game. Lizzie McGee was a pretty astonishing woman for her time. Way before women could vote, she made the landlord's game as a teaching tool. McGee believes the nation's greed will be its downfall, so she creates a radical new board game with an anti-capitalist message. She wanted a game that would teach people how awful it was to have a money-grubbing landlord who gouged you on your rents. She innovates the continuous playing path, chance, and go to jail. And the winner is the player who has the most cash, cards, and houses at the end. But when McGee shows her game to Parker Brothers, they pass without giving her $200. Parker Brothers rejected Lizzie McGee's game. I think at the time they thought it was a little bit too political, a little too educational. So in 1906, Lizzie McGee self-publishes the landlord's game. Hardly anyone buys it. But her game refuses to die. Instead, bootleg handmade versions spring up around the country. It was not uncommon for the public to make their own homemade versions, usually using the street names from their town. There are New York versions of the game, there are Boston versions of the game, there are Philadelphia versions of the game. So that core idea that she had really, really spread like fire. And as it spreads, the game mutates. Ironically, what happened was owning groups of land was glorified. They discovered the joy of bankrupting their family and friends rather than learning about financial justice. And they started calling this twist on the landlord's game Monopoly. 